Today, we're gonna to build and paint Sarissa Precision's Old West Blacksmith Building. Today, we're gonna to build the and paint the Old West Blacksmith Forge. Now, there's a lot of things that I'm going to be doing to this kit that are in addition to the kit itself. Uh, which you will see a little bit later before we get to the paint. Uh, so <laughs> this one, this kit is going to have thatch added to it. We're going to add uh, some various uh, items like wood to this to the kiln, and we're going to be painting that. We're going to be putting some grit to uh, on the floor to make it look like dirt, and a certain few other things. So um, uh, this might be a longer video than usual. Uh, so I apologize for that, but I'll make it as quick as I possibly can. Uh, I do want to say that this is a wonderful kit. It's awesome. There's so much potential with this. There's so many things that you could do with this kit. Uh, but this is the Blacksmith's Forge. And um, there's three really good pictures of, there, uh, of it out here. So <laughs> it has a lot of pieces. And because of that, I punched them all out beforehand, before the video, uh, just looking at it and looking at the instructions. Um, <clears throat> lots of lots of little bitty pieces. So I hung on to our little extras, which are the little pieces you punch out of the walls and things like that, along with a few extra, you know, uh, big wooden pieces that come out of like, say, you know, the big piece that's punched out of here. I always keep these because I can make furniture or, you know, they're at the same angle. So I might be able to do like a little side one-off roof or, make this a sign that goes on the side. You know, I always keep these pieces because you never know what you need to build for these kits. I did want to point that out. So I have a big pile of those over here and I punched everything out and we're ready to go to uh, build the kit. Okay, with that step complete, we are going to glue our walls together uh, to the actual platform itself. All right, with our walls put into the floor, we're gonna fix our stall doors on, our stalls up, just by gluing them in to the side, one, two, three. And there you go, walls fixed in. Now we're gonna work on the outer part, uh, the outer where the kiln is uh, for the blacksmith. And we're just gonna glue those in carefully, starting with these two side pieces and then the long piece over here. Our next step after we've assembled these here is to build our kiln. Now we're going to set this off to the side to dry and we're going to begin to build the kiln. Uh, now I'm not going to put the chimney on yet to the kiln itself because it has to fit through this slot. We'll test it, make sure it can fit through. Yep, it sure can. Okay, so maybe I will put the chimney on. Uh, after all, it will fit through. But we're going to do a few different things with this kiln. Uh, in the bottom, that's why I hung on to these fellas right here, these little bitty guys, because they look like, they will look like burning logs inside the kiln when we put it in there. We're gonna glue a bunch of little bitty pieces into the inside of the kiln 
and uh, make it's gonna look like firewood and we're gonna paint it up like that and I'll show you guys how I did that uh, in this video. So uh, let's build this right now and I'll be right back. So we got uh, the fireplace for the most part put together. Uh, we're gonna put this chimney on next. Um, and then we're going to fix some of this wood in here to make it look like it's packed with, and we're just gonna use some super glue and uh, just pile it in there to make it look like there's wood inside of the kiln here and that's what he's using. All right, and that's why it's really important that you hang on to little bitty bits like this because of this reason right here. I mean, I could have left this bare with nothing in it, but now they're gonna be hot logs, um, super hot logs uh, in, in here. And I'll, I'm gonna paint it exactly like that. You guys will see it's like coal in the back and we'll put a little bit of flame right there in the center for the super hot uh, part of the actual kiln itself. I just think that that adds a little bit more character to your uh, building itself and it was super simple to get super super simple to do so we can put our roof on then and again we're not going to glue our roof we're just going to set it in place just to get the overall look and uh, we are almost finished so this comes with a ladder a neat little ladder we're just going to put that up there for now and uh, we're going to uh, fix our roof for this part here then we're gonna build our troughs. And after we build our troughs, we're gonna put our horse tie off here and the assembly part is complete. All right, we got our troughs built and we're not gonna glue these in either. Uh, the reason being is because I'd like to paint them separately and then glue them in. Um, but for our next step, I'm gonna have to be extra careful uh, on what I do um, because we're gonna give this uh, whole entire thing a dirt floor. Um, and how we're gonna do that is, uh, let me get this in here. Okay, that's a water trough for the blacksmith, horse trough, and the uh, the horse reins tie off there. That, I mean, for the most part, the building is built except for the roof, which we will do. Um, uh, we'll build the roof, and then we're gonna grab ourselves some of this stuff here. This is ground texture. This is gray sand. It's a gray color. You can put it right on top of the MDF. It's not gonna do anything to it. Uh, uh, what it's gonna do is gonna dry off dry on the top you don't have to prime or anything you put this down it is is the primer for the floor 
Uh, so I'm doing a bright color rather than the mud or the dark because I want it to be a, a desert dirt floor. Uh, not complete desert, but a, a desert-like dirt floor. And I'm not gonna do it in every little spot. Uh, I'm actually gonna do some spots with something else called a Ghrelin Earth, um, which is a uh, technical paint from uh, GW, and it is a crackle paint. Um, so and I'm gonna leave some spot, uh, spots with sand still, a little thinner than the others, and then we're gonna take a big glob of this stuff right here where it's gonna crack over the top of that surface. And it's gonna make it look like really, you know, uh, dried up dirt around the kiln, places like that. Uh, so like I said, with this video, there's gonna be a lot of stuff that this blacksmith that we're going to be doing that's, that's <laughs> a lot different than most other buildings. Um, it's not a fancy building and by no means blacksmith. It's just gonna be old wood. A uh, real easy paint job on everything else, but uh, we're going to be doing some more technical stuff with it to make it a little bit more realistic uh, and more immersive for your games. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the top off of this here. And uh, for this step, I'm going to leave this on, but I'm going to take our troughs out. And I did uh, glue this in, no big deal. Um, so we can uh, put our sand down uh, after I glue the roof and we'll let the roof dry and sit off to the side until later when we uh, paint the roof uh, and then we'll get started. All right, so the whole thing is covered in the grit um, not, I mean, everything. And don't worry about if you get a little bit on the walls. It's just dirt on the walls. Uh, you don't have to be perfect with it. I stippled it where a lot of horses walk. I put some streaks and then I stippled. And this is just really, all, all it's there going to do is going to make it look like a dirt floor. Uh, I covered up this hole here. It'll be real easy to clean out for the troughs here. Uh, even after it's done, you can always take a, hobby knife and clear that out and they'll still fit in there. They sit up off the ground a little bit anyway. So it should be pretty fairly easy to take care of and clean off. It is still acrylic and it's a little bit of sand. As you can see, they kind of sit off the ground a bit. So that's no big deal. So the next thing we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna let this dry for just a little bit um, until it's hard enough uh, to where we can work with it. And we're gonna use our uh, a grill and earth from GW uh, to make some, you know, dried out sand parts amongst uh, all the gridded parts there. Also, I did want to point out on the fire pit, I did on the kiln, as ash looks, there's little pieces there. I did uh, stipple a couple spots on top of the front parts of the wood there. Uh, and that's just for texture for later when we, uh, when we actually um, uh, paint this up. So the kiln itself. So uh, on to the next step. After we've added our grit, uh, I started adding a Grillin Earth, which is the GW product I was talking about. It's essentially a crackle paint, um, but it's some of the best on the market, I think, personally. Uh, it's the, the best one that I've used, I should say. And I'm just putting it in various spots. And what it does is it uh, gives you that crackle effect. And you just find an old dirty brush and uh, dip it in there and put it on there somewhat thick. Uh, you'll notice, you know, based on how thin or how thick you put the layer, uh, uh, how far it'll crack. So at this point, uh, the Agrella Earth has dried and it gives us that crackle effect that you're looking for where there's spots where, you know, it's, you know, really dry, um, especially around the, uh, the kiln and stuff like that. We had some cracking put in there on the side, some subtle cracking on the edges and things like that. So I'm going to be using Game Color Dead Flesh as my base coat for the uh, floor. It's going to look a little bit different than you're used to, but once we are finished, uh, it'll have the desired effect. It'll be a lot darker than what's going down with the base coat, and uh, it'll go really well with our washes. So I'm starting on the floor uh, and building my way up as far as painting goes. Once we get the floor painted, we're going to paint all our brick. Once the brick's painted, we're going to paint all of our wood, including the roof, which fits nicely right on the top here. Mm -hmm. 
now we've begun to do our weathering on the floor, on the dirt, in the mud. And y'all, I, I always start with the darkest color and I work my way around all the insides of all the corners and stuff like that, usually with the darkest color that I've got. I also put a wash over this part right here. Um, I'm gonna show you now that we got that done, uh, we're gonna use our dark dirt and all I'm going to do, I'm going to put, pour some of this Agrax Earth Shade onto a palette. You don't need a ton, probably about that much because we're not gonna do a lot of this. Then you've got your dark dirt. You never ever want to take it out of the pot. You want to dump it onto a surface. I'll dump it on my palette. And we're just using the Agrax Earth Shade as a fixer for that dirt, which we put it right there. So we're going to dip it in our Agrax Earth Shade and then dip it in our dirt. And we're going to just Put it right there, grab some more dirt, and it's going to be dark. And that's perfectly fine because this is the fire. And uh, with the fire, we're trying to create some coal dust and uh, some dirt in there. Right here around the edges. And we're using our Agrax Earth Shade as the fixer. When that dries, I'll, I'll show you guys uh, what it looks like um, after that, that is dry. But we're going to move on to our next mid-tone, uh, <clears throat> which uh, is going to be a mixture of using Army Painter Mid-Brown, our Reichland Flesh Shade, and our Sepias. And we're just going to go in spots. We're just going to sp spread it about, not in one specific area. But because this is, uh, you know, ground and ground is uneven, it's in color, it's different, it's very, very different in colors and stuff like that. We're just going to put them in random spots till we got just about everything covered um, with our mid-tones of sepia, Reichlin flesh shade, and mid-brown. And I'm going to probably start with the darkest one of them all. It, that would be the mid-brown and work my way up to Reichlin flesh shade. And it looks like a muddy mess, but it won't here, trust me. Uh, so we're gonna do um, exactly what we've been up to. We used a mid-brown from Army Painter, then we used a Reichland Flesh Shade, and now we're using the Sepia. And I just kinda, 
I keep blending them all the way around in a circle. So we'll start over here with this spot over here and our sepia, we just kind of bleed into the last color a little bit and just dab it on like so. And it will bleed, with, uh, it'll blend with the color you have on there before. We're getting a lot of nice dirt blends over here because remember we're going to be dry brushing uh, at the end of this and bringing back the brightness and it won't look so <laughs> such like a muddy mess but uh, you know dirt dirt floors take on many colors um, uh, they're they're vibrant and as you can see I just filled in that one there this one will just dab and leave a few uh, small brighter pockets there and when it is all dry the ground blends together with a dry brush. We're going to take our original color, Dead Flesh, and we're going to do a dry brush over the entire thing. Took another color. We dry brushed in our Dead Flesh, and it just wasn't bright enough. So I took another color, dark sand, just to brighten up um, the mud inside, and it worked out really well. Um, I think our ground is, is officially finished. <laughs> Okay, at this point, uh, I took the black and painted the, all the black and I base coated all the brick parts with terracotta from Steinal Res. And after I painted black, I went over and dry brushed with a large dry brush. I just took strokes and just went like this and I don't care if I, I didn't care if I got it over the, around the front of the fireplace because you're gonna have soot on this front part here with black gray and got even the ground in a couple spots that have the black soot on the ground. And then I took a ball salt gray and I did more of a, you know, lighter dry brush. I did directly down the middle, heavier, lighter on the edges and lighter, you know, a lighter dry brush um, on the bottom here with the, the uh, uh, ball salt gray. Then I took a neutral gray and did just the center of the fireplace right here and the edges here. Nothing down here. Oh, well, no, I did a light dry brush down here with the neutral gray. Then I took a, <laughs> these are all Vallejo model colors. I took an ash gray or a really light gray and did just the center and just one swipe across here and uh, on the edges just very lightly with this same brush um, down the center. After I was done, with that, uh, you will notice that the color is pretty well like a white ashy color. I used a fluorescent color from Vallejo Model Air, and I used the model hair kind. Um, it's a fluorescent red uh, because it gives that glowing look to the, um, you know, logs and things like that uh, in just in the center right here. And once I did that, I took my uh, neutral gray and ash gray again, or uh, really light gray again, and I very lightly dry brushed over the top of that once this fluorescent red is dry. Uh, that gives a burning effect or that hot coal effect uh, on the actual kiln itself. And that is complete. Now we're working on our terracotta. Uh, we took a red leather, uh, which is red leather, red leather, model color red leather, leather, I can't even say it. And we picked out some bricks that we did not get with the terracotta on all the bricks all surrounding around. And the next step we're gonna do is take a even lighter color, which is orange brown, and we're gonna pick out some more bricks. And then finally, I'm gonna pick out a few bricks that are with this ochre brown, and that will complete uh, what we're going to do with the actual uh, bricks itself. And then I'm gonna cover the whole thing in an Agrax or shade. And I'll be back to show you the final result. All right, with that part finished, uh, we put our Agrax Earth Shade, or we actually use Reichlin Flesh Shade, I apologize, uh, for the bricks. The bricks are finished. And we're going to do some uh, soot and stuff like that with a uh, smoke, uh, Vallejo color smoke. 
uh, later on after we get the roof done and finished like that and uh, everything else, the building. But uh, at this point, it's time to paint the building. And uh, what we're gonna do is use a base coat uh, on all the parts that haven't been painted yet uh, with the Vallejo Model Air Dark Brown. All right, now that our brown base coat is down, you can see the basic components of the uh, blacksmith is really coming together. Uh, you can see the bright floor uh, in contrast with the, uh, the dark wood, that old worn wood building that uh, I'm uh, painting up here. Uh, so the next thing you also need to get grab is the roof for the uh, thatched part and uh, paint the bottoms of that. That would be your next step uh, after getting all the paint done on that building. And after that, we're going to take a uh, ball salt gray and we're going to do a light dry brush over all of the brown parts we just painted. And then we're going to take a neutral gray and dry brush that uh, very lightly, lighter than we will do the uh, ball salt gray. And our final look of the building will be just like these water troughs down here. And there you have it, folks. There's our finished blacksmith or smithy. Uh, I think the uh, only thing you guys didn't see me do is I printed this uh, Lead, Leadville blacksmith sign. I printed that out on a piece of paper and I weathered it up with a little bit of Agrax or shade and just to make it look like it's good and worn. Uh, and we painted our roof. We did a ball salt gray. We did our mixture of our Athenio camo shade and our dark tones together to create the weathering and then we dry brushed with our ball salt and we dry brushed with our neutral gray and it kind of blends everything together with the brown and the green roof. Uh, you can go check out my uh, Sarissa Precision Old West Old Church video uh, to see how I did this uh, step by step. Uh, but it is finished. I'm really happy with it. And uh, <laughs> I'm going to be really happy putting this on the table here pretty soon. Um, there, it, uh, there it is. It's gorgeous. I love it. Um, I will, of course, have some uh, still still pictures of it um, at the end of this video. Uh, I know it was longer than usual, but uh, I had to show you everything that I did to this because I did some new techniques with the floor and uh, with my uh, fireplace there. I added some barrels, which I got a couple more barrels. And the only thing I'm go probably going to add next is uh, some straw uh, for some thatch for this roof here. But uh, this is the finished product. I just wanted to show you guys, and I'm very happy with it. And uh, that's all I've got. Thanks for watching. Please, please subscribe or, and like this video. I'd really appreciate it. And last but not least, from me to you, ta-ta, and we'll catch you in my next video.